hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies who try to destroy our America. Faithful Violet Cato, Britt Reed, daring young publisher, matches wits with the underworld, risking his life that criminals and racketeers within the law may feel its weight by the sting of the Green Hornet. Ride with Britt Reed in the thrilling adventure, A Soldier and His Dog. The Green Hornet strikes again. Young Private Bill Mercer scowled as he approached the long frame building, which served as the hospital in a certain Aleutian Island military camp. Bill's company had sailed for home while he was serving time in the guardhouse for petty theft in the barracks. And now he'd been ordered to see Captain Webb, the doctor in charge of the hospital. Something for you, soldier? I was told to report to Captain Webb. I'm Mercer, Bill Mercer. Okay, Mercer. The captain said to send you right in. That door there. Thanks. Come in. Private William Mercer reporting, sir. Oh, yes. At ease, Mercer. Sit down. Thank you, sir. Mercer, I'll get right to the point. I understand you were in Company D? Yes, sir. I was uh, left behind when they... I know, I know. Mercer, one other chap who belonged to that company was left behind, too. Young chap by the name of Vinton. Private Ned Vinton. Know him? Yes, sir. But we weren't what you'd call close friends. I didn't know Vinton had Private been... Vinton is here in the hospital, Mercer. Couldn't be moved when his company sailed. Had double pneumonia. And, well, he's had a relapse. Gee, that's tough. Do you think he'll... His chances are very slim, Mercer. While there's life, there's hope, of course. But... I get it. That's your tough. Well, Vinton doesn't know his company has sailed for home. Asked that we have one of the men from his company come in to see him this afternoon. That's why I sent for you. Well, I... Uh... His room's just down the corridor. Go in, talk to him. And be careful what you say. Yes, sir. I'll take you to him. I remember, you're the only man of his company left here. If there's anything you can do for him... I'll remember, sir. Sergeant just came out of Vinton's room now with Vinton's dog. It's being shipped to the States today. Well, Sergeant, guess that dog will miss young Vinton. Oh, yes, sir. Hey, get away from me, you mutt. <laughs> easy, Buster, easy, fella. Take him along, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Come on, Buster. Come on, boy. Good thing Buster was on a chain, Mercer. You shouldn't have kicked him. Sorry, sir. I don't like dogs. Come along. men from your company to see you. I'll leave you two alone. Hello, Vinton. What? Why did you come, Mercer? Oh, I was the only one who could come over right now. Anything you want? I want someone to write a letter for me. Okay, I'll write it, Vinton. Look under the pillow. A letter from my, my uncle. I'll get it. Read it, and I'll... I'll tell you what to write. Okay. Dear Ned, you and I have never met. Years ago, your father, my brother, and I had a disagreement. Went out of each other's life. Six months ago, when your father met with the accident, which, as you know, resulted in his death, he wrote to me saying, saying he knew he would, would not live, live that you would, you would be left alone with no living relative but myself. Until then, I didn't know he had a son. Ned... I'm alone, too. I want to make amends and have you come to live with me when you get out of the service. I'll get you started in business. And after you arrive, we'll make arrangements to leave my wealth to you. We need each other, Ned. I'm sending this to the War Department in hopes that it will reach you wherever you are. I'll be waiting to hear from you. Your uncle, John Vinton. Gee, 
I must have a lot of dough. I want to send an answer. I'll dictate a letter. Then give you the key to my locker. Get a picture of me and, and close it. Will you do it for me, Mercer? Sure. Sure, I'll be glad to. Got a pencil in my pocket. An old hunk of paper. There. Now, what do you want me to write? Dear Uncle John, I received your letter while in the hospital. But I'm almost better now. And as soon as I can, I'll be joined my company and we'll be sailing for home. I'll be glad to come to you. And we'll let you know when I arrive. That was all I had except for Buster, my police dog. I sent Buster to the canine division when I joined up. Luckily, he has been stationed here with me. I just said goodbye to him as he is being transferred to the States for further training. I hope if Buster's still alive to have him with us, too. I'm enclosing a snapshot of myself. Uh, look here, Britt. Well, let's see. We should be leaving soon for the States. I'll wire you when we land and then come directly there. Your nephew, Ned Vinton. <laughs> By Joe, Britt, at last old John Vinton's going to have someone around that really belongs to him. Well, I'm glad, John. Here's the snapshot. Nice-looking fellow. Yes, sir. As soon as I received this letter, I said to myself, I'll have to run down to the Daily Sentinel and tell my old friend Britt Reed about this, so here I am. Well, I'm happy for you. I know you'll get a kick out of having your young nephew living with you. More than you could possibly guess, Britt. I wonder when he'll get here. Well, that's hard to tell. This letter's postmarked through San Francisco, so he must have been stationed somewhere in the Pacific. Sometimes the boys arrive home almost as soon as their letters. Well, that's true. Britt, there's one thing I want you to do for me. Of course. What is it? See if you can find out about Ned's police dog. I'd like to have that dog here when he does arrive, if it's possible. A good idea. I'll see what I can find out for you, John. You can leave that matter entirely up to me. It was several weeks later. Britt Reed was busy in his office going over letters with his secretary, Lenore Case. Answer this one in your own way, Miss Case. Yes, sir. I'll send these letters to the editor down a gun again, and I'll find out. Mr. Reed's office? This is John Vinton. I'd like to talk to Mr. Reed, please. Oh, yes. Just a minute, Mr. Vinton. Hello? Britt, I've had news from Ned. He's arriving home tonight. Well, that's fine, John. He'll be pleasantly surprised when he sees his dog, Buster. Oh, by the way, that was a great piece of work you did getting Buster for me. I'm uh, not going to have them meet right away. I'll have the houseman bring Buster in later in the evening after Ned and I have become acquainted. I want you to be here when they do meet. All right. I'll come over after dinner. I'll see you then. Fine, fine. We'll be looking for you, Ned and I. Goodbye, Britt. Goodbye. <laughs> John Vinton's as happy as a kid over the arrival of his nephew. Who is he already arrived? Oh, not yet. He'll be there tonight. Well, I'm glad you were able to get the dog released and sent to him. Hey, Hi, Ned. Hey, Kid. Oh. oh, Axford. <laughs> I'm going over to John Vinton's tonight. We, uh, we might get a human interest story out of the meeting between his nephew and the boy's dog. You know, the one we got out of service. Say, no, Reed. You picked just the right one to write up a story like that. It'll keep you out of mischief. <laughs> <laughs> if you really want a story, I'll go. But if it's just to be kidding me, I... I, I... Well? You'll what? Oh, I'll go anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'll say you will. <laughs> it's settled then. We'll dine at the apartment. Then we'll drive over to Vinton's to meet his nephew and watch the happy reunion between the boy and his dog. Young Vinton is fortunate to come back to all this. You sure live the life of Riley from now on. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, Mr. Reed. Come right in, sir. Well, thanks, Walker. Come along, Axford. Mr. Vinton's in the library with his nephew. This way, sir. Mr. Britt Reed. Britt, come right in. Why, sir, so you've got Axford with you. Good. Well, gentlemen, this is my nephew, Ned. Ned, Mr. Reed, Mr. Axford. Right. How do you know? How do you read, Mr. Axford? Well, sit down, sit down, everybody. <laughs> Ned and I have been getting acquainted, haven't we, Ned? Yes, we have, Uncle John. <laughs> you get that, Britt? Uncle John. 
This my ear's good to hear. I still feel a little strange saying it, I must admit. I understand you had a dog that was in the service, Ned. Dog? Oh, oh, oh yes. Sure, and there's nothing like a good dog, eh, Ned? That's right. <laughs> I sure do miss mine. We used to be together all the time. You see, I raised him from a pup. You know how it is when you get used to having your dog around. Oh, he's a beaut, too. Well, I'm sure you do miss him, Ned. Do I? Gee, I feel lost without him. Oh, but it's just one of those things that can't be helped. You'll get used to it, Ned. Hey, look, Brent, here's a picture of Ned's father that he carried in his wallet. He was my younger brother, you know. Well, I can see the resemblance, John. Well, that is between you and your brother. Ned must resemble someone in his mother's family. Well, that's what I said, too. Ned certainly doesn't look like a bitten. But I can overlook that. Dad always told me I favored my mother's father. <laughs> but you are a bitten and my brother's son. That's enough for me, Ned. Of course. That's what counts. Uh, by the way, my lad, I suppose you saw a lot of action. Uh, what outfit were you with? And uh, where were you stationed? Well, no, uh, no, Mr. Axfield. Ned's been through a long illness, and it bothers him to talk about what he's been through. Uh, some other time he'll tell us all about it, won't you, Ned? Sure. I mean, uh, I'll be glad to, Uncle John. Oh, sure. Uh, what are you planning to do now that you're here, Ned? Ned's going to rest up a bit. Then we'll decide what he should do. Probably finish his education first. That's wise, John. Of course it is. And tomorrow I'm changing my will so as to leave everything to Ned. I don't believe in putting things like that off. <laughs> Glad, Ned, that you your luck. That, Mr. Axford. Well, Britt, I guess it's time for the surprise we have for Ned. Mm-hmm. Surprise? Well, well it'll be a surprise, all right. <laughs> Mr. Britton sure thinks of it. A... I'll <laughs> ring for Walker. Have you guessed what it might be, Ned? No, I don't know yeah. what it might... Walker knows what to do. He'll be here in a moment. With the surprise. Sure, I'm getting excited. Just waiting to see what'll happen. Why? What do you mean? What... Here he comes. Here he is, sir. Well, Ned. That dog, I... That's Buster, the dog you wrote about, Ned. Your dog. Oh. Oh, yeah. I... I, he doesn't seem to know me. Uh, maybe it's because you're not in uniform. Speak to him. Go pat him, Ned. Here, boy. Here, fella. That's strange. That him, Ned. He'll know you in a minute. Hello, Buster. Nice boy. Come on, Buster, down! Take him out, Walker. Snap a leash on him. Oh, yes, sir. Come on, boy. Come along. Gee, he didn't seem to know me, Uncle John. Well, that's strange, Ned. I guess his army training has changed, Buster, a great deal. Don't you think so, Brent? As you say, John, it's very strange. I'm afraid Buster was a bigger surprise to your nephew than we bargained for. In more ways than one. We'll continue our Green Hornet adventure in just a moment. And now back to the Green Hornet. After leaving Benton's home, Brett Reed dropped Axford off at police headquarters. Then he went to his apartment, where Cato, his faithful Filipino valet, and the only person knowing his identity as the Green Hornet, was waiting. Brett told Cato what had happened when Benton's nephew came face to face with his own dog. It would not seem right, Mr. Britt. The dog will never forget master like that. That's just it, Cato. That dog acted as though he had never seen that soldier before. He had it in a letter to his uncle, and Ned Vinton brought up the subject of the dog. Well, he what dog here, then? Yes. Ned Vinton wrote that he'd hoped to get his dog, Buster, out of the service and have him here. Well, that's why John Vinton asked me to try to arrange the dog's release. Well, what do you think, Mr. Britt? I think something's decidedly wrong, Cato. It could be that the chap over at John Vinton's is not his real nephew. Well, perhaps if you hint to authorities... No. That would be embarrassing if I were wrong. John Vinton would never forgive me. What I intend to do is to find some definite proof that he is or is not Ned Vinton. And it must be done quickly. John Vinton's changing his will tomorrow. If man not real nephew, then John Vinton's life be in danger, perhaps, after he changed will. Yes. Of course, as Britt Reed, publisher of the Daily Sentinel, I can wire the War Department for full information about Ned Vinton. Yeah, but the reply may take time coming through. Meantime, I... Meantime, perhaps a Green Hornet find out something. Right. A visit to the Vinton home by the Green Hornet may turn up something. Let's go, Cato. Wait.
wait here, Cato. I won't be long. Moving like a shadow, the sinister figure of the dreaded Green Hornet disappeared into the darkness toward the unlighted side windows of the Vinton Mansion. Cato waited, ever on the alert, until finally he heard the familiar quick light steps of Britt Reed returning to the Black Beauty. Is that you, Mr. Britt? Yes. I've accomplished a little something anyhow. Get going, Cato. What you do at Vinton Place? First, I picked up that letter from Ned Vinton to his uncle. Then in the wastebasket in the soldier's room, I found a part of a letter he'd started, then it crumpled up. So you compare handwriting? Yes. But I find the handwriting was the same. Then I looked through his effects, hoping to find his discharge paper. I guess he carries that with him. I could be wrong about him, but... As a parting shot, I left the hornet seal in his room. Why you leave seal? Trying a little war of nerves. If he isn't the real nephew, that seal may cause him to make a slip. Go back to the apartment, Cato. Hurry. After returning to the apartment, Britt Reed put through a wire to the war department. Then he and Cato waited a long time. Finally, Britt gave voice to his thoughts. Cato? By this time, the chap we know was Ned Vinton should have notified the police about finding that hornet seal. Axford would have let us know if there had been any such call. If soldier really nephew of Vinton, then he called police. Exactly, but he hasn't. So that makes me think he has something to hide. Therefore, he didn't call in the police. I'm going back there and have a showdown with him. Will we take Black Beauty out again, Mr. Britt? Yes, come on. dog from the basement. Put him in the library. Dog, dangerous. You be careful. I can handle him, I think. Apparently tonight he obeyed my order. Here's hoping he'll take further orders from me. Move quietly now. Oh, yes, sir. My plan works. We'll know the truth tonight. Meantime, alone in his bedroom, Bill Mercer was getting ready for bed. Suddenly... Hey, who... Starting out, eh? Green Hornet. That's right, fellow. What do you want? Money. And plenty of it. If you expect me to keep your secret. I don't know what you're talking about. No? (laughs) I think you do. Get to the point. What do you want here? Listen, you. I know you're not Ned Vinton. Stop trying to pull a bluff. I'm calling your bluff, soldier. And I'm here for the payoff. Even if I had reason to pay off Hornet, I haven't any money. So get out. Stop playing the fool, fella. Vinton keeps a lot of dough in the library safe. I'm sure you know the combination by this time. Yeah? Well, I'm not robbing my own uncle. For you or anybody else, Hornet. Still sticking to your story, eh? Well, uh... Maybe you forgot somebody could contact the War Department and find out if Ned Vinton's really been let out of service. Maybe I did at that. You can't scare me, Hornet. Go on, get out. Okay, buddy. But don't say I didn't warn you. You'd better make a getaway with whatever door you can lay your hands on before it's too late. I'll see you again. I wonder just how much that guy does know. Stay here in the shrubbery until we see what he's going to do, Cato. If he not go to library, it means that he is Ned Vinton. Of course, I could be mistaken, but I don't think so this time. Look, let go out in bedroom. Yes, this is the test. Let's go on the side porch. We'll stand just outside the library windows. Follow me, Cato. I tied the dog just outside the window of the library. I forced the latch so that we can open it fast. The French window there. Down, boy. Quiet! He minds you well. Yes. That's a break. We'll wait right here. Look. Someone entered the library with flashlight. Must be the boy. I'll 
Are you still afraid you want to walk in the middle? You see anyone? Yes. He's opening the safe. Oh, he's taking out the money. Get him, Buster! <coughs> Come on! Hey, let's go up! Get away! Get away, you mother! No one's going to get me! This time I'll kill you! No, you won't! The Hornet! Wait, Hornet! That dog! He'll drive me to pieces! Down, Buster! Down! This will take care of you, Faker! You all right? Yes, sir. Now to search this heel. There's the discharge papers. Now hold the flashlight. Oh, there. What did it say? The name of this William Mercer. Not Ned Britton. Yes, fella. You knew he was a phony. Someone come. Must be John Britton, the houseman. I'll leave this discharge paper in the Hornet's seal. That safe open and the money's strewn about. He ought to get wise. Let's get out of here. in the name of William Mercer. Walk okay. in. Call the police. There's something decidedly wrong here. Right away, sir. Watch him, Buster. Watch him. Oh. Hurry, Walker. I want the police here to find out what this is all about and to put this imposter where he belongs. an hour later when in response to a phone call from John Benton, Britt Reed entered the Benton home. Britt, I'm so glad you came over. Hi, Reed. Hello, Axford. And Sergeant Burke, how are you? Fine, thanks, Mr. Reed. Well, what's the trouble? What's happened? Plenty, Reed. I was at cop's headquarters and Mr. Benton phoned in. We came right out. And what do you think? Well, I have no idea, Axford. Mr. Reed, that young fellow Mr. Benton thought was his nephew, well, he wasn't his nephew at all. That's it, Reed. I thought it was funny early tonight when that dog growled at him. And we expected to see him up to the guy and lick his hand. But I don't quite understand. Let me explain, Brady. I've had quite a blow. That young man was an imposter. They've already taken him to headquarters. He wasn't that Vinton at all. How did you discover all this, John? It was the dog found it out. That it was. He caught the spalpeen, robbed in the safe, and jumped him. You don't say. Sure, and that soldier was in cahoots with the Green Hornet all the time. No. Yes. We found a hornet seal stuck on his forehead. Sure, and we know the dog didn't put that there. But what about Ned, John? Did you get any information from a soldier? He said Ned... Ned died in the morning in the hospital in the Aleutians. Ned dictated that letter thinking he'd live. This man, whose name according to his discharge is William Mercer, wrote the letter for Ned. Then knowing Ned was dying, he sent his picture and decided to pose as Ned. I'm sorry, John. Very sorry. We'll hold that spell for you until we make sure your poor nephew did die, like you said, Mr. Vinton. I'll find out through the War Department, John. Meantime, you have Ned's prized possession. His dog, Buster. Yes. Yes, that's right. If it hadn't been for Buster... Well, I'll give that dog the home and attention Ned would want him to have. He saved me from being greatly imposed upon. Robbed, you mean? Murdered, he means. That guy would have got that will signed and probably killed Mr. Vinton to get the door. That's what. To my way of thinking, that dog's a hero. Yes, Axford, Buster is a hero. He certainly knows who is not to be trusted. Sure. And believe you me, I hope Buster's along with me when I run into the Green Harlot. I'll bet Buster would go for him like a tornado. He sure drove that devil out of here tonight. Oh, 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 here, Buster, here. Stop leaving all over Britt that way. Come on there, Buster. <laughs> hey, Sarge, look at that now. <laughs> that just goes to show nobody could say Reed was the harlot. That they couldn't. <laughs> Buster knows the good from the bad. That he does know. <laughs> Thanks, Axford. Very good. That dog's a smart one. Too bad he can't talk. Being a war dog, I'll bet he could tell some secrets that would surprise all of us. Well, that's right, Sergeant. <laughs> Couldn't you, old boy? That's the last street. Great long war dog exposes imposter, prevents this robbery, Green Hornet implicated. We all applaud it, Green Hornet. Thank <laughs> you.
popular radio dramas created by George W. Trentle are a copyrighted feature of The Green Hornet, Incorporated. All characters, names, places, and incidents used are fictitious.